So when it comes to macOS 11, this is for the people that have requested for more clarity when it comes to the versioning that we are seeing with macOS Pixel 11. So previously with like version 10, we knew that every point update was basically a new name. For example, 10.14 Mojave, 10.15, Catalina. However, with macOS Pixel or macOS 11, Apple sort of changed that versioning scheme. They took a more iOS approach like. So with macOS 11, we're actually getting 11.1 .1 and it's still big, sir. We get 11.2, it's still big, sir. And now we're actually on 11.3 and it's still big, sir. So there's a great chance or great probability that when it comes to the next name change expected, we could be seeing that on the next full number. Number. These 11 point updates are going to continue to be the same Big Sur 11.3, 11.4, until we get to the next WWDC event. And then when version 12, macOS version 12 comes out, perhaps version 12 Mars or version 12 Pluto, whichever way Apple decides to call it, that's when we'll see a name change. So that's a little clarity when it comes to that. I know I've been getting quite a number of questions when it comes to that. And now let's get into the video of the update that actually came out today. Today, Apple finally released macOS Pixel 11.3 Beta 3. And at the time I'm recording this video, unfortunately, this update is only available to developer beta testers only. And we don't have the full installer yet and the IPSW file isn't yet available. Hopefully by the time this video comes out or in the next two days, this update will have a full installer and be available to public beta testers. Now, for me on my 2016 15 inch MacBook Pro, the update size was actually a little bit bigger compared to beta 2. This time around it reached in the three gigs so it came in at exactly 3.08 gigs and if we go to see the build number that came with this update you can see the new build number that we have here and it's 20E5196F. Now if you recall correctly on beta 2 of macOS Pixel 11.3 we actually had the build number that had a D at the end and when it comes to stability or on the stability scale D is more stable than an F. Perhaps they found something in this update that sort of pushed stability off a little bit and they tried to adjust their software version. Could be what happened here, but that's the new build number that we have here. And if we go to the storage just to see how much this update is taking, you can see that it just takes a moment to load. And as you can see here, storage is taking up 16. 39 gigs and before that it was actually taking up 16.57 gigs so it's dropped a little bit i got back some few megabytes and it's good to see that the system storage or the storage being taken up by the operating system is reduced a little bit now let's go into the segment that most people enjoy which is the new features and changes that came with this update the first one that i have to mention has to do with reminders so reminders are being updated slightly with each update before we saw how they adjusted how you can sort of sort your reminders and this time around they actually made some changes where you can manually drag and drop and move around reminders according to how you want which is a good thing and the second thing that changed within this update has to do with the code that was discovered i believe by steve boza shout out to him and that code seems to suggest that if you have a scheduled calendar event Optimize charging on your Mac will make sure that your Mac is charged to 100% three hours before your scheduled meeting or your scheduled event takes place. And the next thing that changed with this update that I noticed has to do with the startup speed. So I noticed that coming from beta two to beta three, the startup speed is a little bit faster by like 20 to 30%. So that is a good thing. Let me know if you are experiencing the same startup speed when it comes to this 11.3. Also, the next thing that changed with this update has to do with some minor UI changes within the app maps application so this have to do with some icons being redone over again so not much but it's worth mentioning now quite a bit has changed within the find my application when you open it for the first time you come up to a new splash screen that basically tells you what's new or what's changed and you basically be able to see support for accessories and it's interesting to mention that this time around you can track more products which are non apple devices so like luggage backpack headphones and other items 
and you also see improved notifications and find my network and if you click continue you will see the new items portion within the find my application now on mac i noticed that it's actually not portraying the same icons as the find my update on ios perhaps it's still in progress or could be a bug at this time but you can actually track more products and it's sort of hinting towards air tags that it could be coming in the not so far future now another change if we go to the apple release notes has to do with deprecation support for the developer transition kit which is no longer available as of mac os pixel 11.3 beta 3 so that is starting from this specific update that i've updated to which is unfortunate but it's a change worth mentioning now the same notes also mentioned that rosetta runtime now works when running apps via xcode so if you do use xcode it's a plus in this aspect steve moser you gotta you gotta put some respect on that guy's name and he does so much and he managed to find reference code within macOS Pixel 11.3 Beta 3 that seems to suggest that Rosetta might be removed in one or more regions around the world. Now, this means that if you're running applications that did require Rosetta 2 or Rosetta in order to run, then when you update to this update and your region is within that range or the affected region those applications won't actually run and you see an error message telling you of that that is quite unfortunate but it also goes to show that perhaps apple is gaining more and more confident when it comes to apple silicon m1 max so first developer transition they pull the plug and next rosetta they pull the plug which means x86 applications won't be able to do their tasks so perhaps they feel that m1 is almost ready to take over the world so we'll see how far or where this takes us now those seems to be the new features and changes that typically came with this macOS pixel 11.3 beta 3 now let's talk of the unfortunate some bugs or issues that are still existing with this update and the first one has to do with safari scroll issues and reload issues quite a number of people are reporting that safari has reload issues and also when scrolling through some pages it's not as smooth as it should be and also there's an issue whereby the home pod stereo pair won't connect so if you have two home pods and you bring them together you can actually connect to them as one single speaker and place them you know side by side and you get that stereo feeling so that isn't working correctly and then for apple silicon m1 mac mini users they're still experiencing bluetooth issues when they restart their devices so you are forced to hardwire or physically connect a mouse so that you can get your mac apple silicon m1 mac functional and be able to actually go to bluetooth and connect most of your peripheral devices that require bluetooth for connection which is still at this time a bit disappointing but yeah quite a number of people are facing this now let's talk about performance when it comes to mac os pixel 11.3 beta 3 i did do some geekbench scores just to see how it's performing and for cpu on 11.3 beta 3 single core i got a score of 749 and for multi core I got a score of 3041 comparing this to beta 2 beta 2 i actually had 749 for single core and for multi core i had 3087 performance wise when it comes to cpu it's very hard to tell the difference between beta 2 and beta 3 and now when it comes to gpu i did the same i ran geekbench 5 scores just to see how good this update is performing compared to beta 3 and on macOS pixel 11.3 beta 3 i got a score of 17287 and previously on beta 2 i had a score of 17317 so as you can see again when it comes to gpu more or less the same so those are the geekbench scores and basically this is how my mac is performing obviously things can change in a matter of a few days and i'll be doing a follow-up video in about two days where i highlight more new features or changes that will be found within the code or perhaps with the os itself and also i'll show you how good my battery is performing with this mac os pixel 11.3 beta 3 other than that thank you very much for watching stay safe and i'll see you in the next video very soon peace